Hi everyone, today in this video I will be talking about four different ways to get the related data from your database by using the entity framework code. In this video I will be using the ASP.NET Core 9 and entity framework code 9 and we will be learning these four ways these four ways are first we will be talking about the navigational properties then we will talk about all the loading concepts there are three loading concepts in the entity framework code one is the eager loading explicit loading and the lazy loading so including the navigational properties there are four ways to get the related data and in this video we will learn all of them one by one in detail before talking about this video let me introduce you the setup that i have in my application so here I have created a ASP.NET Core application and this is a very minimal application. This is a web API based application. Here I will be using the SQL Server database and that SQL Server database is running over here as a container in my Docker system. To view the details of this database, I will be using this Visual Studio extension. If you want to learn more about this setup that I have done in this Docker and the this VS Code extension, then there is already one video that I have created on this channel and you will find the link in the description box below. Let's just see what all things we have over here. So here I'm having this database. This is learn EF code. There are few tables. Although I will not be using all of them in this application, I will be using only few of them. So first is going to be the books table, authors table and the language table. I will be using these three tables in this application to learn all these concepts. So first let's just execute this table and see what data do we have over here so if i just right click on this books and select top thousand records click on this connect button you will notice that we are getting all these records as of now we are having five records in this table and we are having these language id and the author id so the last two books are using the same language id and the first and last book is using the same author id so this is the setup that i have over here talking about the application i have already configured this entity framework code in this application so inside this data i'm having this app db context and here you will notice that this is the setup the very minimal setup and i'm having all these three classes at this place then this is the book class it has all the properties and two navigational properties for the language and the author and then we are having this language table and it is again having one to many relationship with this books table and in the author we are not having anything like that this is on purpose and we'll be talking about this concept in just a bit now here i have created one more controller this is the books controller and as of now i'm having only one single action method this is get all books async and by using the db context i am getting all the books from this method okay let's quickly have a look on the program.cs class also so here i have done this EF core setup like this. So I'm using this add db context and these are the options use SQL server and this is the connection string I'm getting from my app setting stored JSON file. That's the connection string. I think that is all about it. If I will run this application then you will notice you will get a swagger endpoint that I have enabled in this application on purpose and from that swagger point now we will hit this endpoint. This application is running on this port. Let's open the swagger endpoints. And here you will notice we are having only single endpoint. If I click on this try it out button, click on this execute button, then you will notice that we are getting all five books over here, but the related data is not there, which is this language and the author. These are the related data. How can we say that these are the related data? If I open this books table, then you will notice that we are having these two foreign keys over here. Based on that, we can see that these are the related data. Now let's talk about our first concept which is the navigational properties let's make few changes so along with this books let's assume that i need to get the data of the author how can i do that so over here we have to use this select statement and in the select method we have to tell all these properties one by one explicitly that is called as the navigational properties now there are two ways to get the data from this place one is by using the anonymous method and second is by using the name of a class explicitly first let's talk about the anonymous method and this is how we can create this anonymous method by using this new keyword let's format this code a little bit like this and over here i can define all the names that i want to get from this particular table so for example i want to get the title and let's assume that this is the description now let's talk about that navigation concept so here from the author i want to get some data which is this keep it like x dot author and i also want to get this x dot language this is how we can define the anonymous object in c sharp application so let's just rerun this application and again try to hit the same endpoint now i'm going to click on this try it out and click on this execute button 
and see what data we will get. Here you will notice that we are getting some data because we have defined only few properties that is why we are getting only few properties. This is the title description and along with this uh, title and the description this is coming from the book table. We are getting the author detail and the language details. Here you will notice that along with this book one we are having this author one and this is the ID of the first language. Similarly, we are having all other records like this. So this is the first approach that you can use to get the related data. Now there is one more concept over here. If you do not want to use this anonymous object and in some scenarios, because this is not strongly bind, so it is not even recommended. So you can use a class name at this place. And let's quickly create a new class over here. We will be calling it as book DTO. Now just for the testing purpose, I have created this book DTO class and I'm using the same author and language class that we are using in our DB set. Now let's use this book DTO over here and this time I will not be using this anonymous object. I will be creating the instance of this new book DTO. Once you will do that, you, then you will get some error because at this place you will have to define name of your properties, which means the title is equals to title, description is equals to description and the author is equals to author. Now let's just format all these things. Let's just rerun this application and see what is the output on our UI. There we are. Let's just refresh this change. Again, I'm going to hit this same endpoint. This time you will notice that again we are getting the same data and this is working as expected with the navigational properties. Now you can also implement all your other operator over here. For example, if you want to work with maybe first row default, first single default, single, all those methods that are available, you can use everything over here, including that where condition. Now let's talk about our second approach, which is going to be the eager loading. In the concept of eager loading, we will have to define that name of that related data explicitly at this place. What does that mean? So here I will be removing first all these things and if I will run this application like this then you will notice that we will get only the books data. There will not be any data of the author and the language. Now what if I want to get the data of the author and the language explicitly. If you are using the if you are using the eager loading then you will have to use the include keyword at this place and here you will have to define which class do you want to use. So here I want to use this author. See how the changes. Let's just rerun this application execute this endpoint again and this time you notice that we are getting all the properties of the books because we are not using the uh, the select statement one by one and but here we are getting the author details at this place but still the language is null we will come on this language in just a bit but let's focus on this author so in all the records you will notice that we are having this author details okay now let's assume that inside this author you are having one more related table. It means this author is again pointing to some other table. Then if you want to include that table also, then how to do that? Then in that case you will have to use this then include and at this place you will get all the properties from this author class. So right now I'm having only three properties. There is no navigational properties in this author class that is why I cannot use that but in your scenario if you are if you are having a navigational properties inside this author class then you can still use that it means you can create a proper chain over here you can use any number of then include at this place and all these related data you will get in your UI now let's try to include the second one which is the language and again I will be using this include you can use any number of include over here any number of then include over here this is going to be the language. Okay, let's save all the changes and just read on this application. This time if I will just refresh this page and try to execute this same endpoint again, you will notice we are getting the error. Earlier we were getting the data, but this time we are getting some data, but ultimately we are getting the error. Why we are getting this error? It is saying if you will notice on the data, first we are getting the data of an object and here we are getting the language. In the language we are getting all three properties, but inside the language again we are getting all the books. Now again that book is again pointing to that same language and it is going to a kind of circular dependency over here. So first we are getting all the books inside one book we are having one language inside that language because that language is pointing to n number of books so we are getting all the books then in one book we are getting again language and then again book then the language and so on but by default only the 32 depth is allowed in this json serialization so we can go up to that 32 and then we are getting this error now why we are getting this error only with this language not with the author let's understand that also so for that first i will have to go to the book here you will notice that there is no difference in this language and the author. Now if I go to the author class you will notice that there is no one-to-many relationship from this author to books. 
if i go to this language you will notice that we are having this navigation which is from language to multiple books it means because of this dependency we are having this circular dependency over there so to over this problem either i can just comment on this line let's just comment this line first and let's try if it is working or not okay let's just refresh it and try to execute again this time you will notice that we will get all the records in the perfect manner we are getting the language and author for each record this is how you can work with the eager loading but make sure before using this eager loading you are using your navigational properties in such a way that you do not encounter this depth serialization error as of now we are using one to one mapping but you can also use this eager loading in one to many concept for example if you are getting all the language and from language i want to get all the books let's understand how to do that also quickly so i will just enable it and go back to the book and this time i will just comment this one over here just to avoid again that circular dependency so in this books let's just comment this one and i will be commenting all these lines so here i'm using this db context dot languages and then i will be using this dot and let's use that include method again and in in that include this time i will be using x dot books and then let's use that to list async Although the route is same, but we are getting a different data, but this is just for the concept. Let's understand what is the output this time. This time here you will notice that first we are getting all the languages and then we are getting all the associated books. So for each language, we are having one book, but for one of the languages, we are having two books, which is this last one. So if you want to have a look on the database also, then you will notice that in the books table last two books are pointing to the same language which is why we are getting two records over here for this fourth language so it means this dot include this eager loading will work for one to one and one to many now let's talk about our second loading which is called as explicit loading and let's just remove all of them over here and just uncomment the previous line and here i will be removing this include because because we cannot use this include method in the explicit loading to work with the explicit loading concept first you will have to get the data over here so maybe first we can start with the one record so let's say here i'm using this maybe first record first async and now i explicitly want to get the related data so how to do that for that we can use this db context how so let's use that db context over here and we have to use this entry method in this entry method we can define our book let's use this book over here let's rename it this is going to be book like this and now here we have to use two methods one method is collection and the second method is reference if you are working with one to one then we can use this reference if you are working with one to many then we can use the collection so in the book we are using one to one which is book is pointing to one single author or one single language so here we will be using this reference let's use that so here I'm using first this author and we have to use a method which is load or load async as per the need. If you are working with the async programming, then go with the load async. Otherwise, this load method is also there. And let's use this await keyword at this place. That's it. Save the changes. Just format this code. Let's remove this DTO. It is not required. Okay, so we are having this plain simple method. Let's just read on this application. This time you will notice that by using this explicit way, we are also getting this author data. By using the same approach, you can use more than one. So for that, you will have to write this line one more time. And here you can define the second one, which is going to be the language. But again, there will be that circular dependency concept. So make sure to use the navigational properties properly. So let's just comment this line and go back over here. Now, if I will just run this application again and hit this endpoint then you will notice we will get the data for both of them this application is running let's just refresh the changes again again try to execute this method and this time you will notice that we are getting the data for both the objects we are getting this language and we are getting this author but by any chance if you want to execute this in an list so for example you are getting list over here then what you can do you can basically use a for each loop at this place and here you can define the book and just move these two lines inside this for each now you will get the data of all the records with this reference data which is the author and the language go back to this swagger endpoint refresh the changes and just try to hit this one again 
So I'm going to click on this, try it out, click on this execute button and you will notice that we will get all the records with all the related data. So we are, this is the first object and it has the language and the author, then this is the second, it has the language and author. Using this approach, you can get all the related data from your database and remember we are using the explicit loading. Now let's talk about our fourth concept which is going to be the lazy loading in this case. So we have already covered the navigational properties, the eager loading, the explicit loading and now we will be talking about the lazy loading. Okay, so I have, for that let's just remove all these for each and first let's understand what is the concept of that lazy loading. So here first I will be using this maybe first async and this is the first book. Okay, so the concept of lazy loading is that here I'm having the data of one single book and if I will execute this line then you will notice that we will not get the related data. We will only get the data from this book table only, neither author nor the languages. But because of any chance if I want to get the related author over here, so for example here I'm writing this author, I can write it like this book because we have the reference from book to author so I can write it like this and if you are getting the data over here then it is lazy loading if you are not getting the data over here then it means the lazy loading is not enabled in your application so by default first let's try to just run this application in the same approach and you will notice that we will not get the data this author will be null because by default the lazy loading is not there so if i will just put the breakpoint over here and run this application by using this debug mode swagger is over here from this one let's just try to hit on this endpoint click on this execute button and here we are here you will notice that we are not getting anything in this author we are getting the null at this place if i go in the book you will notice we are getting all the records but this author and the language is null now let's enable the lazy loading in this application and for that we have to install a package and let's go to the browser and search for that package which is going to be microsoft.entityframeworkcore.proxies search for this one and we have to go to the new get because that's the only place where we can get all the packages so here you will notice that we are having this package but if i go to the versions you notice we are also having that release candidate version let's click on this one but after a few days dotnet 9 will be there and you can use this dotnet 9 package from the main page Okay, so let's just copy this one and go back to our Visual Studio and over here we have to just install this package this time. So how to do that? We have to open a new terminal window, new terminal, new terminal. Let's paste the query. Here you will notice that we have successfully added this package in this application. Okay, now after installing this package, we have to do few more things. For that, let's go to this program.cs and at this place, we have to enable that proxy. So here I will be using that use lazy loading proxies okay that's it now at this stage if you will try to run your application then you will get some error that all your navigational properties must be virtual so if i go to the controller click on this books controller and just try to run this application again how can we do that click on this button and this application will run i'm going to click on this try it out click on this execute button and you will notice that we will get some error over here See, we are getting the error. It is saying that if you are using this lazy loading proxy, then you have to make all your properties, the navigation properties as in virtual. Okay, so let's just stop this application and convert them to the virtual. Okay, so I will be expanding this data. We are having this author. Do we have any navigation properties? No. Go to the book. Do we have any? Yes, we have two. So let's make them virtual like this. Another one also as virtual, which is fine. Now, if I go to the language, then it is already commented so let's just ignore that if i click on this try it out and click on this execute button then here you can notice that we are hitting a debugger and do we have anything in this author yes this time you will notice that we are having all the properties of this author this is how we can enable the lazy loading and we can get the data from database by using the lazy loading concept first we are getting the data from this line and next time if you are using any other navigation i mean the related data then again there will be a new call from this application to the database and this application will fetch all the details about that author here you can also use one more so for example if you want to fetch the language as well then you can do that easily so here i'm writing this book dot language at this place you can notice that we are getting this data in the language and we are also getting the data in the author 
and this is how we can work with the entity framework code to get the related data without using any join i hope all the four concepts are clear to you if you are having any doubt or question feel free to ask everything in the comment section below thank you for watching have a great day